the best meditation is that which continues in all the three states. It must be so intense that it does not give room even to the thought, I am meditating. Having seen through the deceitful senses and allowing them to subside and having thereby ended the objective knowing of the mind, the jumping ego, to know the lightless light and the soundless sound in the heart is the true power of yoga. You ask what is the difference between meditation and investigation. Both amount to the same. Those unfit for investigation must practice meditation. In meditation, the aspirant, forgetting themselves, meditates, I am Brahman, or I am Shiva. And by this method, holds on to Brahman, or Shiva. This will ultimately end with the residual awareness of Brahman, or Shiva, as being. They will then realize that this is pure being, that is, the self. One who engages in investigation starts by holding on to themself and by asking themselves, Who am I? The self becomes clear to them. Mentally imagining oneself to be the supreme reality, which shines as existence, consciousness, bliss, is meditation. Fixing the mind in the self so that the unreal seed of delusion will die is inquiry. Whoever meditates upon the self in whatever mental image attains it only in that image. But those peaceful ones who remain quiet without any such mental image attain the noble 
and unqualified state of the former state of the self. For the beginner, meditation on a form is more easy and agreeable. Practice of it leads to self-inquiry, which consists in sifting the reality from unreality. What is the use of holding on to truth when you are filled with antagonistic factors? Self-inquiry directly leads to realisation by removing the obstacles which make you think that the self is not already realised. Meditation differs according to the degree of advancement of the seeker. If one is fit for it, one might directly hold on to the thinker, and the thinker will then automatically sink into their source, pure consciousness. If one cannot directly hold on to the thinker, one must meditate on God, and in due course, the same individual will have become sufficiently pure to hold on to the thinker and to sink into absolute being. Meditation is possible only if the ego is kept up. There is the ego and the object meditated upon. This method is therefore indirect because a self is only one. Seeking the ego, that is its source, the ego disappears. What is left over is the self. This method is the direct one.
you say you are ignorant of it. But ask yourself, ignorant of what? And whose is the ignorance? If ignorant of the self, are there two selves? Where else are we now? Our very being is that self. Limitation is only in the mind. Did you feel it in deep sleep? You exist in sleep. You do not deny your existence then. The same self is here and now, in the wakeful state. But you are now saying that there are limitations. What has now happened is that there are these differences between the two states. The differences are due to the mind. There was no mind in sleep whereas it is now active. But the self exists in the absence of the mind also. Although it is understood, it is not realised, you say. But it will be, by and by, with meditation. Meditation is sticking to one thought. That single thought keeps away other thoughts. Distraction of mind is a sign of its weakness. By constant meditation, it gains strength. That is to say, the weakness of fugitive thought gives place to the enduring background, free from thought. This expanse, devoid of thought, is the self. Mind, impurity, is the self.
meditation is abiding as oneself without swerving in any way from one's real nature and without feeling that one is meditating. Meditation is achieved through deliberate mental effort. But in samadhi, there is no such effort. It is important for one who is established in their self to see that they do not swerve in the least from this absorption. By swerving from their true nature, they may see before them bright effulgences or hear unusual sounds or regard as real the visions of gods appearing within or outside themselves. But you should not be deceived by these and forget yourself. Meditation is, truly speaking, to be fixed as the self. But when thoughts cross the mind and an effort is made to eliminate them, the effort is usually termed meditation. But Atman Nishta is your real nature. Remain as you are. That is the aim. Meditation being on a single thought the other thoughts are kept away. Meditation is only effective in as much as thoughts are kept away.
Why do you wish to meditate at all? Because you wish to do so, you are told to fix the mind in the self. Why do you not remain as you are, without meditating? What is that mind? When all thoughts are eliminated, it naturally becomes fixed in the self. Meditation on forms or concrete objects is said to be meditation. Whereas the inquiry into the self is vichara, inquiry, or nididasana, uninterrupted awareness of being. Pleasure or pain are aspects of the mind only. Our essential nature is happiness. But we have forgotten the self and imagine that the body or the mind is a self. It is that wrong identity that gives rise to misery. What is to be done? This mental tendency is very ancient and has continued for innumerable past births. Hence, it has grown strong That must go before the essential nature, happiness, asserts itself. Meditation can be practiced with eyes open or closed. The point is that the mind must be introverted and kept active in its pursuit. Sometimes it happens that when the eyes are closed, the latent thoughts rush forth with great vigor. But it may also be difficult to introvert the mind with the eyes open. It requires strength of mind to do so. 
The mind is contaminated when it takes in objects. Otherwise, it is pure. The main factor in meditation is to keep the mind active in its pursuit without taking in external impressions or thinking of other matters. If concentration is made with the brain, sensations of heat and even headache ensue. Concentration has to be made in the heart, which is cool and refreshing. Relax and your meditation will be easy. Keep your mind steady by gently warding off all intruding thoughts, but without strain. Soon you will succeed. You ask how to prevent falling asleep in meditation. If you try to prevent sleep, it will mean thinking in meditation, which must be avoided. But if you slip into sleep while meditating, the meditation will continue even during and after sleep. Yet being a thought, sleep must be got rid of for the final natural state has to be obtained consciously in the waking state without the disturbing thought. Waking and sleeping are mere pictures on the screen of the native thought-free state. Let them pass unnoticed.
You may meditate upon anything that you prefer. Anything you like best. They are all equal in their effect. But you should stick to one. Concentrate on that one whom you like best. If a single thought prevails, all other thoughts are put off and finally eradicated. So long as diversity prevails, there are bad thoughts. When the object of love prevails, only good thoughts hold the field. Therefore, hold on to one thought only. Meditation is the chief practice. As soon as you begin meditation, other thoughts will crowd together and gather force and try to sink the single thought to which you try to hold. The good thought must gradually gain strength by repeated practice. After it has grown strong, the other thoughts will be put to flight. This is the battle royal, always taking place in meditation. One wants to rid oneself of misery. It requires peace of mind, which means absence of perturbation, owing to all kinds of thoughts. Peace of mind is brought about by meditation alone. Any consideration about the seat of the self is theoretical if you fix your attention on a place in the body. You consider yourself as a subject, the seer, and the place where you fix your attention becomes the object seen. This is merely mental imagery. When, on the contrary, you see the seer themselves, you merge in the self and you become one with it. That is the heart.
the final result of the practice of any kind of meditation is that the object on which the seeker fixes their mind ceases to exist as distinct and separate from the subject. They, the subject and object, become the one self. And that is the heart. Yoga Sastra says that the chakra located in the brain, or the brain, is a seat of the self. Purusha Sukta declares that the heart is its seat. To enable the seeker to steer clear of possible doubt, I tell them to take up the thread or the clue of I-ness or I amness and follow it up to its source. Because, firstly, it is impossible for anybody to entertain any doubts about this I notion. And secondly, whatever be the means adopted, the final goal is the realization of the source of I amness, which is the primary datum of your experience. If you therefore practice self-inquiry, you will reach the heart, which is the self. I am Brahman as a meditation is only a thought. Ask yourself who says it. Brahman itself does not say so. What need is there for it to say it? Nor can the real I say so, for I always abides as Brahman.
to be saying it is only a thought. Whose thought is it? All thoughts are from the unreal eye, that is the I thought. Remain without thinking. So long as there is thought, there will be fear. The mind is concentrated in the brain and hence you get a hot sensation there. It is because of the I thought. When the I thought arises, fear of death arises simultaneously. With regard to forgetfulness, so long as there is thought, there will be forgetfulness. First there is the thought, I am Brahman. Then forgetfulness supervenes. Forgetfulness and thought are for the I thought only. Hold on to it and it will disappear like a phantom. What remains over is the real I and that is the self. I am Brahman is an aid to concentration since it keeps off other thoughts. When that one thought alone persists, see whose thought it is. It will be found to be from I. From where is the I thought? Probe into it. The I thought will vanish and the Supreme Self will shine forth of itself. No further effort is needed. 
when the one real I remains alone. It will not be saying, I am Brahman. Does a man go on repeating, I am a man? Unless he is challenged, why should he declare himself a man? Does anyone mistake himself for an animal that he should say, No, I'm not an animal. I'm a man. In the same way, Brahman, or I, being the only existing reality. There is no one there to challenge it. And so there is no need to be repeating, I am Brahman. Light gazing stupefies the mind and produces catalepsy of the will for the time being. But it secures no permanent benefit. Breath control temporarily benumbs the will, but it is not permanent. It is the same with listening to sounds. Unless the mantra is sacred and secures the help of a higher power to purify and raise the thoughts. Everyone is aware, I am. Leaving aside that awareness, one goes about in search of God. What is the use of fixing one's attention between the eyebrows? It is mere folly to say that God is between the eyebrows. The aim of such advice is to help the mind to concentrate. It is one of the forcible methods to check the mind and prevent its dissipation. It is forcibly directed into one channel. It is a help to concentration.
but the best means of realization is the inquiry, who am I? The present trouble is to the mind and it must be removed by the mind only. It is immaterial on which centre of the body you concentrate. Since the real heart is in every centre and even outside the body. On whatever part of the body you may concentrate or on whatever external object the heart is there. There can be no harm wherever you concentrate because concentration is only a means of giving up thoughts. Whatever the centre or object on which you concentrate. The one who concentrates is always the same. Unbroken, I, I, is the infinite ocean. The ego, the I thought, remains only a bubble on it. It is called jiva or individual soul. The bubble too is water, for when it bursts, it only mixes in the ocean. When it remains a bubble, it is still part of the ocean. Ignorant of this simple truth, Innumerable methods under different denominations, such as yoga, bhakti, karma, each again with many modifications, are being taught with great skill and in intricate detail, only to entice the seekers and confuse their minds. 
so also other religions and sects and dogmas. What are they all for? Only for knowing the self. They are aids and practices required for knowing the self. Objects perceived by the senses are spoken of as immediate knowledge. Can anything be as direct as the self? Always experienced without the aid of the senses. Sense perceptions can only be indirect knowledge and not direct knowledge. Only one's awareness is direct knowledge and that is the common experience of one and all. No aids are needed to know oneself. 